Hi, my name is Bruce Ashfield. I am a principal engineer at AMD. I'm going to be talking today about embedded containers as a deployment component, and in particular, how they interact and can work with uh, the Yocto project. Uh, unfortunately, if you're watching this, you're watching the recorded session as part of the virtual summit because I could not be there this time around. Uh, hopefully I can give this in person at a future conference. I will be around for questions at the end, so hopefully we can uh, make up for any extra details at that time. So the agenda and, and what I wanna talk about is a quick overview of em embedded containers, what they are, how you might wanna use them, you know, where they, where they come from and you know, the similarities to, they're just containers. Then we're going into a little bit more detail about the five W's as I described this presentation, which is the who, what, where, when, and why about containers and answering those questions and how you might not think they lead you to the Yocto project or map to the requirements of your typical embedded platform. So it'll be sort of some questions and some answers that will show you that it can lead to, in fact, uh, the Yocto project and an embedded device. Uh, I'll summarize some of the um, Yocto project capabilities around containers, and then I'll do a quick um, sample deployment and update of a container, and then we'll have some questions. So one of the things that, you know, I've been working with embedded containers for probably almost 10 years now. And one of the biggest things that has changed is in fact the increased uh, compute power and resources available for devices that were traditionally called embedded. Um, in this case, we're talking about, it's not necessarily a, a really tiny device, but something that runs on the edge of the network or something that is part of a larger solution. So we're talking about things that are more powerful than they used to be, but we're not necessarily talking about servers in the cloud, for example. But that the power has of the devices has increased over time, uh, maybe not to the point where you're running multiple virtual machines, for example, but you do have plenty of resources to run containers and you'd like to leverage some of the benefits of running containers. Also, what we're seeing on um, embedded devices is the need or the desire or the requirements to leverage modern or deeper software stacks. And by that mean, uh, by that I'm talking about um, some of the different frameworks like Kubernetes, K3S, um, even some of the Podman based um, frameworks and, and th those sort of things. Um, also that, you know, you, you might want, if you're talking about embedded containers, the ability to do orchestration, to do control, and to do updates of devices at scale without needing some sort of custom solution. Because if you take my first two comments with uh, deeper software stacks and uh, the frameworks that you get some of the ability to do the monitoring, the orchestration, the control at scale without needing to write anything custom. You also might have application developers running on these uh, working and developing for these more powerful edge devices and they might be more familiar with containers or the workflow of updating um, modern application stacks, um, and but don't want to interact with a low level embedded build system. So their usability can come into play while you might want uh, embedded containers and while you might want them on an embedded device. And also uh, we found that, you know, there's this building up of the really, slimmed down small footprint uh, embedded distributions. Uh, they've been adding more, fun we've been adding more functionality, they've been building up. At the same time, there's the efforts to maybe slim down or remove components from a larger enterprise distro. So there's sort of a meeting point size device where you might run a built up um, embedded distribution or you might uh, want to run sort of a, a cut down enterprise um, distribution. And the comment that we uh, that that at least I always make is that of course it's better to or easier um, to build up than to tear down, in particular if you want to do it in a controlled manner. The 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 other advantage uh, if you run with uh, containers on your embedded device is that you do have the flexibility to address 
the requirements of different verticals. So what you want for networking and automotive is, is, is different from a, a security application, for example, but you do have the flexibility to change the framework, to change the configuration, to use the sandboxing, to use different networking namespaces in order to meet the requirements of the verticals. Um, also, uh, the footprint of a container runtime, it can be tailored to the device. So we have, uh, I'll go into a little bit of detail in, in the Yocta project in the meta virtualization layer. We have everything from Run C, um, which is the standard Golang based runtime for many of the container uh, frameworks. Uh, we have C run, which is a C based one. We have uh, Kubernetes, we have K3S. We have all these different framework, frameworks that have different resource requirements, different uh, security surfaces, and that you can tailor the, the footprint and the surface area of your runtime for your needs. So it's not one size uh, fits all. And that if you're running your application already on top of a, uh, in a container-based environment, that your applications, they can either be streamlined to take advantage of that lower footprint, or they can be largely unchanged. So you can run the same application in a container on this and these embedded devices as you could anywhere else, because there is no modifications to the platform. We're talking about standards-based um, unmodified uh, container runtimes, just like you would find on your Linux box running at your house. So I briefly mentioned some of the things uh, in meta virtualization on the previous slide. And, you know, we've been at doing virtualization, which is actually virtualization in the sense of hypervisors and system virtualization in the sense of containers. So it's, we've been working on this since um, 2012, starting with over time adding more complex type applications and frameworks as well as uh, uh, adding more of them. So in, you know, in, in 2012, it was basically LXC, Libvirt, and Zen. And, and there was that type of containerization as well as the uh, virtual machine options. But as, as we marched through time, you can see that we added uh, Docker showed up, Run C, Container D, all of a sudden you're now getting into some of the components that you would have heard about um, as you know, in all of the, the current container-based platforms and stacks. And then there was sort of the breakup of Docker in the sense of the different components run C and the and container D in the way that they would talk to the deeper frameworks like Kubernetes and then cryo appears to different back end. Then we became there the standards uh started to happen. So OCI tools showed up in 2017. And then uh, you know as we march forward we now have Podman, Scopio, C run, we have um K3S, Nurkchol, um and, and different types of utilities from manipulating containers. So there's a pretty broad set of options that you can map to what, what you need. And, and I've done demos at different points and different conferences of different parts of these. And, and today we'll be using Podman and, and, a, and, a, and Curses, a Curses-based interface to Podman as part of the demo today. So looking at something that we haven't uh, demoed before and just showing how it can be used uh, to, to, as part of the deployment and update mechanism. So now I wanted to go into a little bit more detail, as I mentioned in the description of this presentation, which is the W's. So this is the, the Q&A about the questions that you might ask and, and my description of how they could lead you towards um, the Yocto project, as well as embedded containers. So, the, the W's, of course, the questions and the answers that you would ask, uh, they do um, depending, they do vary based on uh, the device, your target, uh, your platform, uh, what are your requirements, but the flexibility as I was reading through that set of technologies, flexibility is, is critical in that you can chart a path through the, the questions and the answers and then the options that we have in the Octo project and you can pick uh, what meets those requirements. But the goal overall is to avoid either ad hoc or one-off solutions with a, a magic set of uh, cut and paste instructions that one guy knows or 
one developer knows um, it, and also, and then not being locked in. You don't, you want to be able to potentially change your container runtime or change different parts of the system in the future and not have to follow one technology uh, line until until the end of time or at least the end of your product. So, and we do want uh, things like determinism in the build. Can everybody build it? Is there, is, can it go into a CI CD pipeline? We want reproducibility. We want everybody to be able to build it. We want it to be the same thing every time. And the ability to upgrade the system, upgrade the platform, and in fact, upgrade and change the different um, underlying technologies that are part of the, the platform and actually running the containers. So for who, you know, the, some of the, 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 the questions that come to mind when I was doing this uh, presentation was, you know, who needs containers? Well, who creates uh, these containers? Who's consuming them? Who's using them? And then other questions that follow from that, that you, you, you might be aware of with some recent developments of supply chain and software supply chain is, you know, can we tell who created a container? Can we tell what's in a container? I'll cover that later. So the answers to some of those questions in the context of this talk and the goals is, you know, who needs a container? Well, it could actually be um, an application or a system developer, meaning we can deliver high level application functionality in a container, or you can actually have containers delivering low level parts of your system them um, in you know, bit streams to FPGAs, device drivers, um, firmware updates, things like this can also be develop, developed and delivered through containers. But the big thing is when, whether it's the application or assistant developer, they have, they want a different visibility into the container and the system and how it's built. So with the Yocta project, you know, that, that is backed by the build system and or an SDK meaning you can go back to the build system to regenerate update containers, or maybe you just have an SDK or binary artifacts or a container registry somewhere that you're using. Um, you know, and the other uh, question we had was who created um, the container? So part of what you get with the, uh, the, the Yocto project is, you know, it provides traceability as part of the licensing, the SBOM, the source archiving. There's a bunch of pillars of the Yocto project that, you know, it provides traceability into the software that you're running in the container that you can provide along with the container. So we can figure out how it was built, when it was built um, and, and do analysis based on that. How they created the container, that of course uh, also depends on the use case. Um, is it just a, a test system that we're doing the container work in? Uh, is it meant for debugging? Are we talking about DevOps? Is it a deployment? Is it a pipeline? So at that case, the, the you know, who created it, it could be an integration developer engineer, could be the application developer uh, doing local testing or deploying to test platforms, or it could be, again, that system integration and, and uh, developer and engineer, they may be uh, providing these containers. But as for who consumes it, of course, it's pretty much, it can be anybody that uses the platform. So it's uh, developers can absolutely consume the containers as part of uh, their, their work. Um, and users can absolutely, um, meaning somebody that buys your device or your platform could be consuming the containers. They might have nothing to do with um, the development or the creation of the platform. They might just be a user. Or it could be somebody in the middle who's a third party integrator, which is integrating their own software onto the device and then going to end users. Um, what we should point out is depending on where you are in those in that spectrum, that there is no open embedded or the Yocta project build system knowledge is required. You don't, in this case, I've done talks in the past about um, uh, binary outputs and artifacts on the Yocta project. The fact that you can consume and use these containers without ever touching or knowing that it was built from open embedded and BitBake, but the build system in the SDK is there backing it when you get to the point that you do need it. So the next of our five um, uh, Ws is what? Um, I've covered a bit of this 
in the lead up to the slide, but you know, some of the things that come to mind around the what theme are what containers, you know, what are containers used for on an embedded device? What are the contents of the container, which is similar to who created it that I was talking about? Um, what container runtime is being used? What cloud native framework is being used? So there, these are more in, in, in following the theme, these are the more of the, the technical questions about how and you know what is used. The answers, you know, is that containers, again, depending on those requirements I was talking about, they can be used for deployment. They could be, you know, that in, in that sense of software delivery. They could be used for security and isolation of the application. Uh, they could be used as an update mechanism for the device once it's been up and running and it's in the field. It could be maintenance. They could be application or system um, containers. So that they can be, what can they be used for? They can be used for many different parts of the system. Um, what are the contents? And this is again, goes back to the who created your container and what is in it. So the Octo project I mentioned has artifacts detailing the contents of the container, outputs from the build system, and they can be delivered along with the container signed and, and, and provided. Um, in the, the technology timeline that I provided for meta virtualization and the Octo project, you know, the, the answers the question about what runtime or what should I use? So um, of course we don't and we won't and haven't developed our own container runtime. So standards-based solutions um, are supported uh, in particular CNCF projects and, and OCI, the Open Container Initiative technologies are available and are supported. And, but it's not a prescriptive sort of um, layer as part of the ecosystem, if you will. You have the flexibility to choose what works for you and there's different configurations and the system will work, but there will be a bit of configuration on your own after you've chosen um, the technologies that you want. And again, do you want a framework? What, what CNCF, what, what cloud native framework should I run? Do you want to run K3S? Do you have enough horsepower to run full Kubernetes? Do you want Podman? Do you want none? Do you want um, systemd to launch your containers on startup? Uh, you can absolutely do that. So the, the flexibility um, of the, the watts are more technical and the, the answer is we provide a whole set of different technologies um, and you can choose the one that makes sense for your device. So, you know, where uh, in this case is where, you know, are typical devices that can leverage containers? Where, where is this running? Um, you know, and also where can a Yocto project created container run? We're two um, where questions that I came up with to, uh, in, in the theme of this presentation. So the big thing is, um, is that, platform because we I get I've keep mentioning about this platform flexibility and standards based approach that these containers can run anywhere from the edge to the core to a small embedded device uh, and you don't actually have to change your application you can run it on any one of these uh, different devices it can be air gapped you can be installed you can have a local container registry you can do whatever you need to do so the answer is where can they run uh, the, the answer is anywhere, um, almost anywhere. Uh, somebody will catch me on claiming anywhere. Uh, the Yocto project uh, in particular, again, the Yocto project create, create, contain, created containers can also run anywhere because they're built, they're, they're cross-built just like everything else in the Yocto project and open embedded. But whether or not the platform was built using the Yocto project that you're running on, you can run these containers because of the, 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 the underlying core technologies of containers, the isolation and, and everything that you need. Um, in fact, that you know, with the Yocto project, of course, because it is multi-architecture, multi-C library, multi-everything that you can build for any number, everything from ARM64, x 664 to, um, to, to PowerPC uh, and you can tailor your build and then deliver them to run on almost uh, any kind of device, whether it was or wasn't built with the Yocto project itself. 
So our, our next one is, you know, when. Um, when can containers be used? In particular, uh, when in the life cycle of device? Or the other question that we I get when looking through requirements is, you know, when should packages, full images, or containers be used? So the answers that I came up with, some of these questions that are, are, are leading us towards the, the answer of uh, the Yocto project is that, you know, containers, they can actually be part of almost any part, any phase of development, which is sort of what I was hinting at when I was talking about the who uh, question as well. Um, they can be used during development. They can be used during production. They can be part of your debug, your test, whatever you need to be. So when can they be used? They can be used at almost any part in the uh, of your development cycle. They can be baked into the image and used for update, you know, which can be locally provided, which I mentioned about a local registry, or maybe they're fetched remotely. Um, so they can be used at any of these any of these points in the life cycle, meaning um, you had to do it when you were producing the device, or it's in the field and you're updating it later. So the, the again, the when. Depends on how you built it, but both ends of the spectrum can be supported. Um, and what I would answer for the question about when to use containers, packages, images, is that it's not a exclusive sort of question. The, uh, the containers, they can coexist with the Octo project image creation, the package feeds that the Octo project can create, and other binary artifacts, which it could include, as I mentioned, um, bit streams or bootloaders or um, first stage boot. You know, there's no need to choose one or the other. In fact, you know, you can use these containers to feed, to pull in the packages. You can use the packages to create <laughs> containers on the target. You don't have to choose. So, um, and you can, of course, migrate from one to the other. The, the last W is the Y and how. So the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, you know, why use containers? You know, why can't we just use container build service in distro X? Um, how can an embedded device use containers, which we've mostly answered already, and how can embedded, embedded developers leverage containers, which we've also um, pretty much also answered already. So uh, in particular, uh, uh, for the answer of why use uh, container, I would say, why not? <laughs> but no, um, uh, they're not actually appropriate for every scenario because there is some um, uh, extra configuration. There is some, if minimal, overhead, um, whether it be disk or memory footprint or um, that sort of thing. Um, but, and uh, so you need to, to look at your requirements and decide if you need to do any sort of containerization. Um, and of course, uh, to answer the question of, you know, can why can't I just use any um, distro or build uh, build technique for creating my containers, whether it be a Docker file or um, uh, some other build service? Um, in that, absolutely, any distribution or any way uh, method for building the containers themselves um, can totally be appropriate. Uh, can be part of uh, your 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 product in, in a commercial situation. Um, the only thing we say is, of course, just be aware of all the requirements around delivering container-based platforms and applications, um, and that, you know, the, the Okta project has many supporting capabilities around that it provides uh, as part of the base um, uh, project that can be leveraged by the containers, and that was, again, the licensing, the software bill materials, and those sort of things um, that I was talking about earlier. And that, of course, many or all of the benefits of containers um, that you'll read about anywhere, you know, why use containers, what are containers, they can absolutely be applied to an embedded platform and embedded developers. So the summary of the Yocta project and container capabilities is um, that, you know, it isn't, if it, it isn't it all about the, the application? Um, why would you care from building from source? Uh, and the thing is, yes, it is actually all about, a lot of times about the application, but again, the supporting uh, issues around delivering uh, your platform 
commercially you, that is you know that's why you care about knowing where the source is where it came from because that's how it is easier to generate potentially easier to generate those artifacts um you know the the Octa project it those underlying capabilities are solving problems that you may not know you even have yet um that we are standards compliant and compatible and that it's about building block technology so it's choice we're not looking to pick winners for can of container runtimes and lock you in it's flexibility um, elements of the solution are spread all through the ecosystem whether it be the meta virtualization layer oe core meta open embedded meta security different layers that are part of the ecosystem different parts of the solution live in different places and that it's all about configurability and tunability Containers are, again, what I've been saying, are one of many different Yocta project outputs, whether it be the, you know, the SDK um, packages, SBOM images, you know, it's only one thing and you have the ability to use any or, or none of them. And again, as I've been talking about um, different parts of the, the, the value proposition, if you will, come from different parts of the system. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is the um, talking uh, part of the presentation. I'm going to quickly show a demo that shows the system in action um, to use Podman in this case uh, to do a sort of small footprint, really basic service deployment um, using uh, Podman and this Podman TUI, you know, this NCURSES interface from Meta Virtualization. Uh, we're going to deploy a third-party container and a Yocta project container together and then do a quick update and extension of the uh, of the container. Let me switch my share um, to a different part of uh, my... Um... I will now share. I think I found it finally. I will share my console. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is a running I built uh, just a few days ago. I built a QMU x86 6464-bit, uh, um, fairly minimal system. It's using the 5.19 uh, kernel that will be part of the upcoming Yocta project release. And, you know, so that's our, our base um, platform. It's got Podman and the supporting uh, technologies underneath. Um, I'm also, I also have on this target in a different terminal, we have Podman, so we can run this. And this is a, um, a little bit of a monitoring solution, if you will, for, to uh, see what's going on with Podman. And it, right now the system, you can see our run C versions there, um, Conmon build. Anyway, there's different parts of the system that are here. Um, and there's no pods, there's no containers, there's no volumes, there's no images, there's, uh, there's just the Podman network bridge uh, that's available at the moment. So there's nothing actually on uh, the system. We have a simple, um, there, there's, there's two parts of uh, the, the system. Um, we are going to pull and run a banner sort of a standard if you will um, banner application that is used quite often to show how podman works and then i'm going to deliver curl um, as a minimal container built by the octa project so we can interact with that banner and there's two different forms of this curl container and that's what i'll be uh that's what i'll be showing so if we come over to uh, the main console, and I do, you know, I do to a podman images. No, we don't have any images. So in this case, we're going to pull a third-party container, one that I don't, didn't build. So we now have an image on the system. If we jump over to here, we can see, yes, we now have this libpod banner image created two months ago, 12.1 megabytes. Running, but still no running containers. Um, we're actually going to, before we start pulling our own container, we'll use Podman 
um, and we could absolutely launch it through K3S or something else or the, the 2A, but we're doing this by hand. We're going to run, um, give it a name web server and we're going to run it. So we're, we're actually starting. So we now have a, a running container. If we jump back over to the interface here, oh, we now have a container. It's eight seconds old. It's running, uh, that's running a banner. And in this demo, the way that we will interact with um, that is through this uh, curl application container image that basically just delivers the, <coughs> the Octa project um, curl built, put in a container, an OCI container, which will be put onto um, uh, a Docker hub repository, and then we'll pull it onto the container. So um, over here, um, you can see I can I can do a, a quick bit bake on this uh, application container we build, and I had the system prime, so it doesn't take very long. It's wonderful. It built, and we will now run uh, Scopio to copy it to my Docker Hub under something called Metavert Curl using the latest tag. So we now have that container available on my uh, my, my Docker Hub. So if we head back over and we will now, if we can just find the right command, I think I found it, we will pull in this container. To the system. So we're doing a, a, a pull. The container has arrived. We go over, it's still not running as far, I should say, it's an image. So we now have my meta virtualization curl based container. Anyway, if we want, of course, we can do something like this. We can bring this up and we can uh, we can inspect the details of it, and that will tell you again when it was built, the entry point, which is the curl binary, uh, the different details of the container. And quite simply, I should show in the application. Um, the OCI image entry point is sent to curl um, and that it's it's got busy box backing in. That's all it does. So when you run the container, curl is going to run as the entry point. So when we actually run the container, which is right here, if we run it with no arguments whatsoever, the entry point will be executed. So when we run this, the entry point will be executed. And of course, curl says, well, you didn't tell me to do anything. So of course we can run, we can add that on the end, localhost 80, and it's now talked to the, uh, the banner application and it's printed out Podman. And okay, so that's that. That's the first iteration. So congratulations, you wrote a simple container that knows how to run curl, and it's interacting with a different container system. But you know, we don't like, for example, say we don't like passing options. We don't want to type in localhost port eighty every time. So I wrote a slight tweak in the single image right now, just so we can show as a demo. Um, I gave it a different tag called easy, easy to use and that I'm going to actually provide some um, arguments to the entry point, which is that the that HTTP localhost 80 are the entry point arguments. These are all parts of the meta virtualization framework around um, building containers. So if we now bit bake the container again, Up we come, it builds, it finds something to do because I changed the configuration. We rebuilt the OCI image. Congratulations, we now have that. And we are going to change our tag as we push it up to easy. Up to Docker Hub it goes. Of course, this would be part of a pipeline or application development of workflow that we normally be doing this, but you know, for our purposes, this is what we have. So now we need to pull this. Uh, we need to do now, of course, pull the new tag 
onto the target. So if we run podman pull again, but in this case using the easy tag, we have an update. If we didn't provide that, it would have told us everything's up to date. Congratulations. We jump over to here and we now see we have two tags for that container. We have latest and easy. If we run it like we did before, well, in this case, we want to make sure we run the uh, the right version of the, the right tag because we're because I did it with a tag versus um, reusing latest, we actually can have them both coexisting on the target, which is, of course, useful for many things, as you can imagine. So when we run um, this easy version of the container, if the demo works, it automatically prints Podman because the HTTP local host was changed as part of the container definition on the build side, which built the container, which we uploaded to Docker Hub, which we pulled down and it always asks to do, uh, it always has that HTTP colon colon localhost. And yeah, it's on the system, it ran, those are both. And of course we can always go back to by default, which will be the latest, it doesn't know how to do it. Uh, and we can run localhost 80. And there you go, that is the tour of Podman, the different interface that we have uh, to talk to it. You can see now that we have multiple running different containers that have exited. Um, you can re-execute any one of these containers at any time, even through this interface, um, or you can delete them, remove them, prune them, uh, whatever you want. Um, and that, you know, it's a system like you would find or inspect any sort of system. So that is um, that is the demo and now uh, we have it looks like just a few minutes left for questions so I can either we can either take some now or that can be something that is done offline later and you can find me in the usual locations thank you very much for listening uh, I appreciate uh, the chance to present this and again hopefully I can do this in person at some point in the future